Hi, everyone. Uh, in this episode, uh, let's talk about the concept of uh, ground reaction force. Okay, so in order to uh, explain uh, what ground reaction force is all about, uh, we have to uh, actually uh, uh, talk about Newton's third law of motion, which is law of reaction. So according to this law, for every force or torque action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So let's use a golfer uh, as an example. So during the swing, the golfer will exert a force to the ground. So this is the force uh, exerted by the golfer to the ground. And let's call this uh, action. Then according to this law, there is an equal and opposite reaction at the same time. So in other words, a force going this way. So this is the reaction actually uh, provided by the ground and it is acting on the golfer's foot. So this is the action and this is the reaction. And that these two have the same magnitudes and uh, the opposite directions. So whenever there is a force exertion, you will always have a reaction force acting at the same time. There's no exception. And uh, this can all, uh, the, uh, uh, this relationship uh, ship can be also observed in a uh, torque exertion. So if uh, your foot uh, applies a torque to the ground, uh, then the ground will also uh, uh, generate the reaction torque, uh, which will act on your foot. So uh, whether it's a force or it's a torque, but still you will have a reaction force and reaction torque. The magnitudes are equal to each other and that the directions are the opposite. But the force and torque you are acting, uh, you are exerting to the ground will basically affect the motion of the ground or the earth. Then uh, the force and the torque uh, acting on your body will determine uh, or uh, affect the motion of your body. So for us, uh, you know, when we look at the corpus motion, then obviously these, uh, these reaction force and reaction torque are more important. But that's why we specifically focus on these here. So the ground reaction force is defined as the reaction force acting on the golfer's foot uh, from the ground. So this blue arrow here, uh, this is the ground reaction force. And then uh, it is basically a passive force. That means that the ground cannot uh, push you uh, actively, uh, voluntarily. It's uh, just a reaction to uh, your action, your force. Uh, but one thing really important about the ground reaction force is that the magnitude and direction can be manipulated. So it depends on how you push the ground. It depends on the magnitude of your action and the uh, direction of your action. So uh, depending on uh, you know, how you interact with the ground using the legs, uh, the ground reaction force can show a different uh, magnitudes or uh, directions. Uh, the same thing uh, goes to uh, the ground reaction torque. Uh, the ground reaction torque is the reaction torque acting on Corfus foot uh, from the ground. So when you apply a torque to the ground, then the ground will also uh, exert the torque uh, to your foot at the same time. So this is the reaction torque, and this is called the ground reaction torque. Again, it is a passive torque, and then the magnitude and direction uh, can be manipulated. Um, depending on how you interact with the ground. And then where the force is acting is called the center pressure. Okay, so center pressure is the point of action of the ground reaction force. Okay, so once we have all these defined, then it will be easier to uh, uh, explain uh, some additional concepts. And then let's go back to uh, what we did in the last episode, um, you know, the, dealing with the concept of torque. Torque, by definition, is equal to uh, the moment arm times uh, force magnitude. So for example, in this case, this is uh, near the top of back swing, uh, but uh, the combined ground reaction force is acting at the combined center pressure here. And then this force is a lot of inclination. So as a result, uh, you know, the, this curve uh, forms a long moment arm here. The moment arm in this case is the perpendicular distance from the center of rotation to a line of action of the force in question. 
So uh, this uh, distance is the uh, moment arm. So uh, the, the torque generated uh, in this case is this moment arm times the force. And particularly at the, this position, the inclination of this force arrow is really important because that determines the length of the moment arm. Now, the, the one on the right, this is uh, during the downswim when the lead arm or the left arm uh, becomes a parallel to the ground for the right-handed golfer. So at this position, the center pressure moves uh, toward the lead foot. So it's uh, now close to the lead foot here. And then the force is generally uh, uh, upright, uh, more vertical. And then the force magnitude is increasing. And then uh, this is the moment arm between the center of mass or the center of uh, rotation uh, and uh, the line of action of the force. So this golf uh, maintains a reasonable uh, uh, moment arm here. So as we can see here, the, the length of the moment arm is really important in uh, determining the uh, magnitude of torque. And then here, uh, I've, I've got several questions about uh, what the uh, player A does better than player B. Uh, so, uh, so we have two important issues. One is the direction of this force, because this inclination uh, provides a lot a uh, long moment time here. And also, another issue is the position of the center pressure. So it was uh, uh, located here close to the trail foot, but now at this position, it is close to the lead foot. Okay. So what determines the position of the center pressure? So let's first uh, uh, talk about uh, the position of the center pressure. So uh, this, these two are the individual uh, foot center pressures, and then this is the combined center pressure. And um, so we have uh, these two forces acting on the individual feet, and that this is the combined ground ratio force. And then uh, uh, this combined center pressure uh, this basically serves as the point of action of the combined ground reaction force. But then what determines the position of the combined center pressure? The answer is basically this is determined by the ratios of the vertical forces acting on the fit. So for example, in the frontal view here uh, at the same uh, posture, so these red arrows basically show the magnitudes of the vertical forces. So this is the vertical force acting on the trail foot. Uh, this is the vertical force acting on the lead foot. And then this is the torque. And if this is 100%, and say uh, this is 75% and uh, here 25%, then the combined center pressure also shows the same ratio. So, but now here, this is 25% and uh, this is 75%. So if you, uh, you know, uh, look at this uh, in the perspective of uh, torque, so let's, let's pay attention to the torque generated by this vertical force about the combined center pressure. You have a 75% force here, and then this distance will serve as the, as the moment arm for this force about the center, center pressure. So 75% force times 25% moment time here is equal to 25% force times the 75% moment arm here. So essentially, uh, this is the balance point of the two uh, forces uh, in terms of uh, torque generation. But again, this uh, combined center pressure is basically determined by the ratio of the vertical forces uh, acting on the feet. Um, and then the same thing goes to uh, the lateral view here. Um, so again, uh, this force is the vertical force acting on the trail foot. And this is the, the one on the lead foot. And then the total. Again, let's say this is 100%, and then 75%, and the 25%. Then the combined center pressure will divide uh, the distance from the trail foot center pressure to a lead foot uh, center pressure into a 25% and 75% ratio. So basically the combined center pressure position will be determined by how much vertical force is acting on the, on the fit. So in other words, if you wanna move the center pressure, then you have to uh, change the amount of uh, vertical forces acting on, on the fit.
And the one thing uh, here uh, important is uh, the concept of uh, center pressure shift is not the same to a uh, weight shift. We roughly use uh, this, uh, this expression, weight shift, but uh, to be exact, the uh, COP shift is not the same to a uh, weight shift because the weight is acting through the center of mass. So weight shift means a uh, uh, motion of the center of mass. Then uh, COP shift is basically determined by the ratios of the vertical forces as I explained already. So these are uh, different. And then the next question is then, uh, how this scope uh, generates this much inclination? It is basically, uh, uh, you know, function of uh, the vertical forces and the horizontal forces this scope generates at this position. So here again, the same body posture. This is the ground reaction force acting. Then this force can be uh, divided into this horizontal component and the vertical component. Okay, so, and uh, in order to increase this inclination, uh, you know, if you have a larger horizontal force, it's better. And then the smaller the vertical force is, the better. So we have uh, uh, these here. So you just uh, in the perspective of this inclination, you know, if you keep a larger horizontal component and the small, relatively smaller vertical component, then you will have a lot of inclination. So you will be able to uh, you know, uh, come up with a long momentum. And then these, uh, this horizontal force and then this vertical uh, force, these are basically coming from the individual horizontal and the vertical forces. So we have this much force acting on the trail foot. And uh, here's the horizontal component and uh, here's the vertical component. And then for the lead foot here, we have a horizontal component and the vertical component. So sum of these two is equal to this one. And sum of these two is equal to uh, this one here. So in order to uh, increase the inclination, then you have to uh, have a large horizontal force. That means you need to have large horizontal uh, forces for the individual bit here. But imagine if uh, the two forces going in the opposite direction, because you are pushing the ground uh, you know, equally, Okay, outward, then these two forces will be in the opposite direction that they will cancel each other. Then the combined ground reaction force will be vertical. So in order to generate this inclination, you should not have uh, equal push outward. Okay. And then the vertical force, the easiest way to uh, decrease the magnitude is using the unweighting. And I will explain this uh, in the next slide, but then you can certainly uh, uh, decrease the vertical force uh, during the swing. Okay. So again, but the, in terms of inclination, first, uh, the magnitude of the horizontal force is really important. That means uh, you have to interact with the ground in the horizontal direction. Okay, in this one here, uh, what we see in the graph is uh, the magnitude of the vertical ground reaction force. Uh, the unit here is the body weight. So uh, here's the one body weight. And then initially at the beginning of the backswing, uh, the vertical ground reaction force is close to a one body weight. The red line is the combined ground reaction force. The green is the leader foot uh, ground reaction force. And then blue is the trail foot. And then if we uh, pay attention to the combined ground reaction force, uh, as you can see, I, at this stage here, the ground reaction force is greater than the body weight. So let's call it the push, uh, push phase. And then uh, from here to here, the ground reaction force becomes uh, smaller than the body weight. And then this phase is the so-called unweighting phase. And then uh, during the downstream from here to, uh, you know, to, to the impact, which is 10 here, and again, this is uh, the push phase because uh, the vertical ground reaction force is greater than the body weight. So overall, we have a push unweighting and the push uh, phases. So, and then also when we look at the uh, individual uh, vertical forces here, then let's say at the beginning of the backswing, this golfer generates larger force using the lead foot. In other words, he has a lead side push. Okay. 
and the soon the two forces uh, are equal to each other. So then the center pressure should stay uh, right at the center of the stance because uh, the combined center pressure position is determined by the ratios of the vertical forces. But uh, since the vertical forces are equal to each other, 50% each, so it should be at the center, right? And then here we have uh, you know, the, the push uh, from the trail. So this is the trail side push here. And then at this point, uh, the force acting on the lead side is a lot smaller. That's why the center pressure shifts to the trail side. And then uh, early, during early downstream, the two forces become equal to each other again. So the combined center pressure should stay at the center of the stance here. And then as you can see here at this point, uh, you know, we have a lot of uh, unweighting here. So the vertical ground reaction force is way smaller than the body weight. And the, typically, if you have a uh, you know, really active swing, then the unweighting peak occurs right after the top of back swing. And then finally, uh, in the downswing, you have a hard push from the lead side. So this force is even uh, greater than uh, the body weight. So the force acting on the lead side alone is greater than the body weight. And overall, uh, this is uh, about 1.85 uh, times the body weight, but um, the majority is coming from the lead foot. So what we can see here is, at the beginning of the backswing, or even before the backswing starts, you have a good lead side push. And then during the backswing, we have a trail side push. And then during the downswing, we have the lead side push. But this basically shows the stepping like uh, rhythm in golf swing. Okay. So um, again, at the beginning of the back, uh, backswing, you're using the lead side uh, and then try to uh, start the backswing. And then during the backswing, you have good trail side push. And then uh, during the downswing, you have good lead side push. So, uh, you know, taking turns here and then pushing, pushing, pushing. So it's very similar to uh, stepping. Okay. And then uh, one thing uh, important here is the push should be uh, downward and outward at the same time. So downward, this is not a problem, but the, the push should be outward, as you can see here. So the push is outward, so the reaction force is uh, inward. Again, outward action and inward reaction, outward action and inward reaction. So by pushing the ground outward okay, during the step, you will be able to promote good the horizontal interaction with the ground. And then this stepping like a rhythm automatically gives you good uh, center pressure shift to uh, each side here. So during the backswing, because you have a lot more force acting on the trail side, the center pressure shifts to the trail, trail foot. During the uh, downswing push here, because uh, a lot larger force is acting on the lead foot, so the center pressure shifts to the lead side. So as long as you have, you have a good push, stepping like a push, then you will automatically uh, move the center pressure properly. And then particularly at the top of backswing here, Using the horizontal push, you will be able to generate large horizontal force component. So that's why at the top, the force arrow shows a good uh, inclination again. So the, that the horizontal component is coming from good uh, horizontal interaction with the ground by using outward pushes. And also at the top here, we are in the middle of uh, the rating here. This, this is really close to uh, the Unweighting peak. So unweighting uh, decreases the uh, vertical force. So you have everything you need uh, to promote a good uh, you know, interaction with the ground. So the easiest way to promote a good interaction with the ground is using the stepping leg rhythm. And that's why I uh, use the, uh, the two step swing drills uh, a lot because they are natural and also they automatically. Uh, promote really good interaction with the ground. Thank you.